Today we'll continue uh, with our uh, electric field lectures. And previous lecture we've seen how do point charges generate electric field around them and how those fields uh, behave uh, if the charge is positive or the charge is negative. So uh, those uh, uh, charges will uh, generate what are called electric fields. Uh, those lines uh, basically uh, a way to visualize the electric field in the region. As I said, they are, uh, they have arrows that uh, point to the direction. Uh, also, the density of those lines represents the strength of this uh, electric field in the region. In some areas on this region, if, for example, a region that is close to the charge, and we have seen that the electric field is inverse proportion to the distance squared, then the lines will be denser. If the point is a bit further from the charge, then the lines, the density would be less, as we will see in the coming slide. And uh, usually those lines, uh, the direction of the electric field is tangential to those lines, as we will see later on when we look at field lines that are curved, uh, the tangential component uh, is the component that defines the direction of the, uh, of the field. Also, those lines never cross, and they also start from the positive charge and they end up at the negative charge. So let's look at uh, those uh, lines for the charge, point to charge case, where my charge is a negative charge. As you can see, those field lines are straight lines and they, they end at the, at, the, at the negative charge. So they point toward the negative charge always. And this is only one single point to charge that is negative. You will see all the lines are straight like this, terminated at the, at the negative charge. However, if the charge is positive, then they will start, they will start from the positive charge and they go in all directions. Again, this is for the case of one single positive point to charge. If there are other charges around, then those field lines are going to interact with each other, as we will see here. Here we have uh, two charges, and as I can see here, I have those lines starting from Q2 uh, terminated at Q1. What does this mean? This is a question. Here in this question, we need to know what type of charges do we have here. Now, since those lines, they are originated or say starts from the positive charge, as you can see, they go perpendicular at the beginning and then they tend to bend till they terminate again back here in a, per, in a perpendicular angle as you can see here. So since the, those lines, they start from the positive, they end up at the negative, then this Q2 is a positive charge and this Q1 is a negative charge. Now notice that at any point, the tangential component here defines the direction of the of the charge. So let me, if I take this point, then I need to to draw the tangential component here, and this tangential component basically will show me the direction at this point of the electric field, as you can see here. But let's take more curvy line. In this case, this is the point tangential component. Then. The electric field is pointing this way. If I take this point, then the tangential component again is going this way. So this is as the direction of the electric field right at any point along the field line. So the answer here is Q2 positive and the Q1 is negative. So the answer here is a C. Now let's move on to this question. What is the direction of the electric field at the location indicated by the 
asterisk and the field line diagram to the right. So here, if I am to draw the, the line following the same pattern of what I am seeing here, then, then basically the tangential component on this, at this, on this line at this location basically tells me that the direction should be in this direction. South toward the, the west, which basically means the answer is SB. Now, again, I forgot to mention here about uh, the field line density. As you can see here, if I am to look at the density in this region, for example, for the field lines, definitely I can see that the field lines here are denser than, than this point here. So that's why in this case, the lines here are denser than this point here, and that's why the electric field here is stronger than the electric field here. And as you can see, those field lines, they don't cross. So now here, another question, where is the magnitude of the electric field in the diagram to the right, the strongest? Definitely, if I am to compare a with B, B seems to be in a region that is denser than A. C to be, seems to be also denser than B. And definitely D, the, the point where I have the highest density of uh, field lines. And that's why the electric field here, which basically equals to, if you recall, K, K, Q, magnitude over R squared. So the smaller the distance between the point of charge, that is the charge that is generating this electric field, the greater the electric field. And as you can see, first proportional to that distance squared. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, consider the three electric electric field patterns shown here, assuming there are no charges in the regions shown. And remembering the general rules about field lines, which of the pattern represents a possible electric field? Is it number one, is it number two, and or number three, and why? Well, if we are to uh, evaluate number one, we can see that uh, here in this region I have lines that are pointing outward and at the same time I have lines that are pointing inward for the same point of charge or this offer for the same particle which basically makes it impossible because if that's a positive then all of them will be pointing uh, outward if, or if that's a negative then all of them will be pointing inward what about number two number two it seems to be the best representation for an electric field, I can think of a pointed charge positive here and another negative charge here and focusing in the region in between. And I can basically, if I am to evaluate this, uh, th those field lines against the criterion that I had at the beginning, I can see that they don't cross. I can see that they are all pointing in the same direction. and the best representation of a field line. However, number three, I can see that those lines are cut right, right in here, they are cut, and that they don't continue to the, to the origin, and that's why I will eliminate number one and number three, and say that number two is the, is the uh, best possible representation for the electric field. Moving on, then we will, uh, as I said, now evaluate the uh, electric field for uh, charges that are on a plates and also for uh, this lecture for charges moving in, in, a uniform, in a uniform electric field and we will explain what does uniform electric field mean. So if I am to look at a plate, a conductive plate, for example, 
And then this plate, I have uh, charges that are distributed all over that plate. If you recall, when I had a pointed charge, positive point charge, only one positive pointed charge, then we have seen that the, that the field lines are moving or directing toward outside in all direction. However, if I am now to bring to this uh, plate, uh, not only one point of charge, no, I will have pointed charges that are all over on that plate and they are from the same type distributed all over. In this case, in this case, the existence of those pointed charges that are distributing everywhere will not let those lines to be uh, deflected up or down. On the contrary, they all now will be uh, facing in one direction, as you can see. So if I have a plate, then, then the field lines will be as you can see here, parallel, pointing, they all point in the same direction. So I have them now, as you can see, parallel this way, pointing in this direction. So this is in case I have positive charges all over. If I have a negative, if I have a plate with negative charges, then things would be, would be the opposite. So this is, those are negative charges. And in this case, I will have the lines basically pointing uh, inward in this direction. All of them are pointing inward this way. If it's if those charges on that plate are are negative charges. Now this is the difference between uh, a pointed charge, where basically this pointed charge is positive in this case the the lines as you can see pointing outward in all directions however if it's a negative charge then they all point inward this way however if i have to put plenty of charges align them all on that plate those field lines now are going to be compressed this way such that those lines are going to look parallel to each other as you can see here okay so uh, we have now uh, due to that uh, charged large charged plate i have the electric field as you can see perpendicular and parallel all of them are parallel and perpendicular on the on the plate same thing here and as you can see the direction is inward toward the charge if it's negative out outward if it is positive now what's going to happen if i bring now two plates and i put them uh facing each other this is now this is the plate the positive that has positive charges and this is the plate that has negative charges you can see here that Though at this side, the field is going outward. This is field going inward, assuming that the charges here, the total uh, magnitude of this charge is the same for both of them. Then when I put them facing each other, so here we have the same field going in, in this direction. Here we have the same field going in this direction so if i put those two plates facing each other then the electric field ideally ideally will cancel outside the plates and will also will only be concentrated inside between those two plates and in this case i would call this a uniform electric field why uniform what does the word uniform mean the word uniform means that at any point in between any point in between those two plates, I have the magnitude being constant and the direction is also pointing 
in the same direction. So at any point between those two plates, I have the electric field having the same magnitude and pointing into the same direction. Ideally, as I said, ideally the electric field outside here is zero. Why? Because the electric field the, the coming from the positive plate equals an opposite direction than the electric field coming from the negative plate, and that's why they're canceling each other outside, and this is ideal. Now remember, the electric field here between those two plates cannot be calculated as we have seen from a point charge. It is a bit different. Now let's move to this example. In this example, we have a tiny negatively charged oil drop of mass 2.45, 10 to the power minus four. So this is my mass here. It is in a region of uniform electric field of magnitude five times 10 to the power of five newtons per coulomb. This is the electric field. This electric field is just sufficient to hold the oil drop motionless against the force of gravity. What is the direction of the electric field? Well, if this is the force of gravity, if this is the gravitational force, then my F coming from, from the electric field is Fe. In this case, if Fe has to point upward, then based on this equation, E should be pointing, E should be pointing F, divided by Q, and the Q here is negative, then E should be pointing in the opposite direction. And in this case, the electric field would be pointing downward based on this expression. Why? Because Q here is negative. And remember, we always say that if my charge that I am evaluating, um, calculating the force at in the existence of a field, then if it's negative, then the direction of the electric field will be the opposite direction of the force. So in this case, the electric field will be pointing down. Now let's look at, let's calculate uh, item B. What is the charge on the drop? The charge on the drop, if I am to use the expression Fe equals to Fg and then Fe, substitute Fe with its equivalent, Qe, and then Fg with Mg, in this case, Q, the charge would be Mg, which is uh, 9.8 times, which is 2.45 times 10 minus 14 times 9.8 divided by the electric field, which is 5, 10 to the power 5. And in this case, the charge would be Q equals to 4.8, 10 to the power minus 19 Coulomb. This is the, the charge. Okay, now moving on uh, to the next example, we have uh, the electrons in a particle beam each have an initial kinetic energy. So each electron has an initial kinetic energy of 1.6, 10 to the power minus 17. The beam is directed to the right as shown. What is the uniform electric field, magnitude and direction necessary to stop these electrons in a distance of 15 centimeters. So let's go to here and draw my electron here. So this is uh, an electron. This electron, uh, as we know, we ha has a charge of 1.602, 10 to the power minus 19. Coulomb, and it has a kinetic energy, so it is going with a, with a velocity in this direction, and has a kinetic energy of Ek1, so let me call this one, this is point number one, 
of 1.610 to the power minus 17 joules. And this, we need to apply an electric field such that this electron are, is going to come to a stop after 15 centimeters. So after 15 centimeters, this electron is going to come to to a stop. The kinetic energy is given to me. I have the mass of the electron as 1.9.11, 10 to the power minus 31 kilograms. So that's the kinetic energy right at point number one. At point number two, it comes to a stop, which means V2 will be zero. Okay, so in this case, in this case, uh, we need to apply an electric field. Now, guess how is the electric field is going to be? The electric field has to apply a force that is in this direction to cause an acceleration opposite in, in this opposite in the opposite direction to make it come to a stop. So in this case, I will have to apply an Fe. Now remember, if Fe has to be in this direction and this is an electron, then definitely the electric field should be pointing in the opposite direction. So this is the direction of the electric field. So in this case, if I am to take the, my coordinates as x and y in this direction, then what I need to do, I need to calculate the electric field. I need to calculate the force first. And in this case, the force, I can get it from the conservation of energy where I have W equals to delta EK. And in this case, I have W as here, the work done by the electric force is Fe times delta R times cosine theta equals to ek2 minus ek1. So I know that the angle, if this is the, as you can see, delta r is in this direction, then theta is 180 degrees, and fe times delta r is 15 centimeters, so it's 15 centimeters. This now becomes minus one, minus one, equals to EK2. EK2 is gonna to come to a stop, which means zero minus half mv1 squared, which is given to me, this whole thing as 1.6 to the power minus 17, 10 to the power minus 17, so I need Fe, so Fe is minus 1.6, 10 power minus 17, divided by 0.15, and Fe equals to 1.0, Seven, ten to the power minus sixteen in Newton, and then I have F equals to Q E or E equals to F over Q, and then E is one point zero seven ten to the power minus sixteen divided by. 1.602, 10 to the power minus 19, and E equals to 666 newtons per coulomb. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. In this slide, we need to uh, evaluate the the performance of charges entering a uh, uniform electric field such that they are uh, perpendicular on that field. We have here an alpha particle, which is charge of 
two positive uh, E due to losing two electrons is sent through a region of uniform electric field as shown below. Which of the following is the correct illustration of the resulting trajectory of the alpha particle? The field is directed upward as shown. So we have the field going upward. We need to, we're, and we're applying a positive charge. A positive charge is coming with an initial velocity entering this region. Which one has the uh, correct trajectory of the alpha particle? Now, if we start with, with this one, this one definitely is not correct because we have this particle that has a mass and it will never respond in this behavior. That's why we will eliminate this one. This one is also wrong. Why? Because the charge is, the particle is a charge, and here there's an electric field, it will see a force, so definitely it will, have, it will respond to this force. Here it's not responding to that force, which means this is wrong. Uh, this one is wrong also, and this one is, and this one also is wrong because that's a positive charge, and we know that electric field goes from positive toward the negative, and this positive charge will never come uh, closer to the positive charge and you know going away from the negative. On the contrary, it will be uh, repelled from here, attracted to there. So both of those are wrong. So I'm only left with those two uh, paths. Which which one is the correct one? Now, if you look at at both of them, both of them are basically attracted up to this point toward the negative charge. And then the only difference is that this one continues to curl up. However, this one is going straight. And definitely we know that uh, a particle will curl if it still has a force that is uh, trying to uh, pull it. And it's the, in, in, in a different, they're causing it to deflect where Right at this point, I have no forces at all applied on this particle. So there's no explanation why this uh, charge is uh, curling up this way. However, this path seems to be the, the more reasonable path because right after this point, there is no force applied on this particle. And this particle now should continue with its velocity that is uh, facing right at this point. So the answer is, is A. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next slide. In this slide, we have a uh, charge the drop that enters uh, a uniform uh, electric field. As we can see, it has a velocity of 25 right here at the entrance. 25 meter per second that is parallel to the plate that has a charge a charge of uh, minus 1.9 10 to the power minus 10 coulomb so this is 10 to the power minus 1.9 10 to the power minus 10 coulomb and a mass of 1.13 10, 10 to the power minus 10 kilograms with a velocity of 25 meter per second entering this uniform electric field. What is the acceleration of the drop while it's between the plates? So we need to calculate the acceleration. Now, a very important uh, uh, given information here that, that we need to neglect gravity and the air resistance. In this case, if I am now to evaluate this problem, Basically, I will be looking at, at this uniform electric field where the magnitude of the electric field is given by 4.75, 10 to the power 4 Newton per Coulomb. So, and it is pointing upward. So this is the electric field. 
in a form and pointing upward. And then right here we have we have a charge that's coming with a velocity v1, where v1 equals to twenty-five meter per second. The charge q is minus one point nine. 10 to the power minus 10 Coulomb and the mass M is 1.13 10 to the power minus 10 kilograms. What is the acceleration of the drop while it is between the two plates? Acceleration, basically, if this is a negative charge, this is a negative charge, and I have the electric field pointing upward this way, which means going from the positive toward the negative, then definitely the force here would be an attractive force, and this Fe would be in this direction, which is basically opposite to the electric field. So if I am now to calculate this F, then F equals two, Q times E. I know the direction of the F, so let me now calculate the magnitude. The Q is 1.9, 10 to the power minus 10, times 4.7, 10 to the power 4. Fe is 9.025, 10 to the power minus 5 Newton. So how do I calculate the acceleration? We know that F equals to MA, and in this case, I have here FE equals to MAY, if we assume that this is Y. So, Fe is pointing downward, so definitely Ay will be pointing also downward, so it would be Fe divided by, by M, so Ay is Fe 9.025, 10 to the power minus 5, divided by M, which is 1.13, 10 to the power minus 10, and Ay in this case would be 8, 10 to the power 4 meter per second squared. So this is the acceleration. How long does it take to get through the electric field? How long does it take to get through the electric field? Here the distance is given to me of this plate. So this plate has a 5.5 5 millimeter so this delta x here, I have delta x as 0.5 millimeter, which means I can use the kinematic equation. So here, in this way, I have the acceleration as zero, so I have x minus x naught equals to v x naught t plus half a x t squared, and in this case, acceleration along the x axis is a zero, then the time is delta x, which is 0.5, 10 to the power minus 3, divided by vx naught, which is 25, and now t equals 2, 2 times 10 to the power minus 5 second, or t equals to 20 
microsecond. Now, see how much is the drop deflected from a straight path, i.e. delta y. Now, if we go here, this one is the, the deflection. So I'm talking here about the distance between here and here. This is delta y. In this case, if here is my reference coming from here, measuring toward here, then delta y would be negative. So I have here minus delta y equals 2. V y naught t plus half a y t squared. Now remember the the initial uh, velocity on the y axis is zero right at this point toward y is zero, and I have here minus delta y equals to half the acceleration a y is minus because it is pointing downward times 10 to the power 4 t squared as 2 times 10 to the power minus 5 squared and in this case delta y is Sixteen ten to the power minus six meter or delta y uh, sixteen micrometer. Now, before we end, we need to remember those uh, rules about uh, the charges and the electric field. Always remember that opposite charges attract, like charges repel. Electric field points away from positive charges toward negative charges. And uh, for uniform electric fields, we can analyze the motion with the kinematic equations because we'll be having a constant acceleration in this case.